Hey everyone, I'm um, just going to shoot a quick video on a meditation I've been doing uh, and just some of the things that came up in it. It's, it's kind of uh, uh, interesting for me, really interesting meditation. And also I think um, there are a few things that might demystify um, meditation if you're not sure what to do. And the reason why I smile a little bit is because meditation is simply um, just being present yeah so you can do it anyhow you don't have to have baggy trousers and sit cross-legged and have a big beard um, this morning you know I've got a baseball cap on earphones uh, sitting on a bench um, I had a had a from Brooklyn cafe in Barcelona I had a nice latte and so let me uh, just give you a little uh, this is where I am. Um, and so it's just a, um, it's a beautiful uh, moment for me to come away from the family, have a bit of uh, space and quiet time. So I sit here and I just literally become aware of uh, my surroundings. And what, what amazes me is, um, you know, it depends how active your monkey mind is. I have clients whose minds literally they they cannot separate from them, so they're completely caught in their mind. To this morning, I'm not caught in my mind at all, so it's very easy for me to um, shift into sort of flow state, which is just being present of my senses. What was fascinating is when you. Um, get into that moment of being fully present and you start to become aware of your surroundings etc it just becomes very, like everything slows down you become very calm it's very peaceful there's no mind it's absolutely beautiful um, so that for me is uh, coming back to myself the, the, the true the true me and some of the things I picked up on this morning which I found uh, just uh, my awareness was aware of them was so I have this scene in front of me and there's people moving and there's dogs playing and there's trees and everything and so what I realize is as I look at it how much I'm not picking up with my senses so I kind of shift between my senses and I so I started off with my vision and I was like oh look there's a tree right in front of me so that I've got this whole uh, my reality outside of me is this um, sort of landscape area that I'm in and then I become aware of the tree right in front of me and I focus in on it and there's so much detail I wasn't even aware I was just like oh look there's a bird's nest there. I wasn't even aware of it so the more you look at something the more you go into it there's more detail there's more information and that goes um, for your senses but also with your mind so uh, as you know like uh, for instance, I had a client recently who, in his mind, he's he's really honed in on radiation and it, it's really making him not peaceful. He's worried about radiation the whole time. So that inside of him, in his internal uh, reality, where most people spend their time, he's drilling down into one particular thing out of infinite things that he could drill down in. And so, you know, people say focus on the positive, uh, but this, and it seems very simplistic, but there's some truth to that. Like, what do you want to focus in on? Do you want to focus in on stuff and complain about it and, and get worked up about it? Or do you want to focus in on something that you can either is beautiful or you can add to or is creative or, you know, it just depends where you want to put your energy. So externally, what I was doing was putting my energy like, oh, I didn't realize there were some buildings right over there and then I my my vision goes there and it look at more details and more details or if I had uh, I, I have a certain limit to my vision so when I look at the leaves uh, I can't go deeper and deeper but I know if I went in with a microscope there would be more and more detail more and more information infinite it just keeps going down into it and so I, I took away from the meditation how uh, whatever I focus in on, there's more and more to learn about it. It's almost infinite. Uh, same with um, if I'm, say, in my business and I go, oh, I'm going to look at marketing. And it's just like infinite. You know, you, 
So you want to be careful what you go down. Like I, I just outsource anything that's not interesting to me, and I go focus in on my my particular skill set is, um, you know, helping others resolve um, pain and discomfort in their lives, either from a physical issue or non-physical. And so that's where I focus my time um, and getting really good at that. And uh, selfishly, it's for myself as well to improve my life. But I, I've moved further away from that and more into helping others because uh, I'm in a, you know, I've done a lot of work on myself, so I'm pretty uh, solid foundation. And the other thing that I found interesting is, just wait for that. Yeah, the other thing I found interesting was there, there were dogs that came over and they're playing. I don't know if you can see them. In fact, that, that little one is who I'm going to talk about. So there are all these dogs and they bring their own personalities. There's not too much mind there, but you got um, the little one who's really quick and sharp and the bigger one who's got longer strides and can catch that little one in a straight line. But the dog just keeps changing directions, which is what it's really good at, um, probably for chasing rats and things. Um, so I was just looking at the dogs and I was looking at the owners and then you, you can kind of see which owner belongs to which dog and the behavior of the dog and the behavior of the human. I, you know, if I want to put my energy and in look into that, uh, I used to, I've spent decades put, looking at people and analyzing them. I don't really do it too much anymore. I just, uh, I do that for a living. So, but I was honing in on the dogs more and there's this little Staffordshire Bull Terrier that came and it was immediately bullied and it was, it was a really sweet dog. It was going up to everyone and licking them and, and you know, trying to, wanted everyone to like it. I was like, oh, that's a sweet dog, that's a sweet dog. And the dog, bigger dogs were kind of knocking it over and it was immediately submissive. And then another dog came that was smaller than that dog and was more, um, uh, what's the word, beta male, beta dog, you know, like not so dominant. And that turned really nasty on it. And it, um, it actually bit it and bit my hand as I took the dog away, well, it bit it kind of, just had a little nibble on my fingers and it just again it's funny how sometimes the nicest people the most extreme niceness is usually um, you need to be watching out for the opposite so no such thing as a nice guy the nicest guys I remember this guy once in in the football world an agent and he called himself the nice guy and uh, he turned out to be not so nice um, so you know, whenever anyone's too jammed up on one aspect, they usually got the opposite in their shadow that is just waiting to come out. But that's, I'm just talking about dogs, but uh, probably the owner has got something to do with that. She's running around screaming after the dog. Um, yeah, so, so the meditation is fundamentally just becoming aware and everything slows down. Your, your senses become m more heightened um, you can feel the change in, in the pressure around you. Um, most people are too busy to even notice, oh look, there's a huge nest up in that tree. And then you look at it further, you, there's a whole ecosystem around that tree. Oh, and then I look, look up at the sky and there's birds everywhere, and swallows flying, uh, it's gonna rain. So there's probably, when they fly high, it means something because they're really high up. Um, so in doing that, it's, it's a beautiful experience. And if you are too busy externally, caught, trapped by either your mind thinking, um, you know, it, it's usually trapped your mind. You're not aware of your environment. Um, things just fly by and you go, where's my day gone? I'm not living, for, I'm not fulfilled. I'm not, there's no rich, richness. So when you meditate, you look at the richness of your environment, you go into the details of the color and the, the, the smells and the temperature and the pressure and everything. And it's just, um, that's where I'm happiest in that moment. So that's for me is meditation. I also think that um, over time, this is my theory, if, you, if you're constantly caught in your mind, your eyes no longer see your environment. So they become wasted. If you stare at a screen as well, um, if you think about what that takes for your vision to do, it, there's no depth 
there there's no uh, like right at the moment I can go from so, uh, something very close to me down there at that leaf and really look at it and then go immediately far into the distance and that's training my the muscles and the flexibility and the fitness of my eyes so if you never see if you're never looking one well, then you're never using your eyes and they become over relaxed and then you they you know the energy doesn't flow there the lymphatics don't flow circulation stops flowing you just get a degeneration of the eyes so it's important to look really look not just look at a screen look and look at the depth and and uh, take in the different lights and it's all nourishment for the soul and for the physical everything's connected um okay so i'm i'm uh, gonna be here for another five minutes hopefully i'm not attacked by this staff again <laughs> uh, while i'm meditating but i was pretty um, i was cool under pressure i was in a flow state so it just didn't bother me so all right um any comments or anything about how what you find when you're meditating that would be really cool to hear that, that too uh, if you like the video please uh, press that smash that like button and subscribe to my channel it really helps all right have a great day everyone take care